in just a moment. We have hockey game two, Canucks Avalanche Hirsch making his first ever playoff start for Vancouver. Barry, we got a matchup here, Tikkanen and Forsberg. Exactly, they're shadowing Tikkanen, uh, trying to help uh, Forsberg, but it doesn't work here. He fights through the check and scores a goal. Great players do that. Take another look. Battle from behind, Kaminsky throws a one-handed. You see him fight through Tikkanen's check there. Not good for a shadow to do that. My favorite player, Gino Ajik here, a good cross check. Right behind the head there, steps in front, knocks his guy down, tips the goal, and great shift for Gino. Look at the dance after. Great dance. We're tied at one. Back comes Colorado. Uwe Krupp back from that major knee injury. The big backhander redirects past Hirsch. Hirsch takes it with a high stick. Barry, what do you have? You see it right here. Backhander, it's in the air. Recky touches it, but don't forget, it has to be below the crossbar, which it really was. It's a goal. So it's 2-1 Colorado. Seesaw back to Vancouver. McGillney digs it out. Comes around, circles, falls down, shoots and scores. Great goal. Wow, we're tied at two. Colorado now on the power play. Scott Young gets it to Sandus Ozelinch. Wide open net, bangs it in there. 3-2 Colorado. Now looking for insurance. Claude Lemieux shoots. First the save, juggles it. Looks like he could join the surface. Great juggling act for the save. Vancouver now looking for the tie. Mike Ridley to Sillinger. Breakaway hits the post, 3-2 Colorado after one. Second period, Russ Courtnall dumps down low. Trevor Linden puts it in. We're tied at three. More Canucks now. McGilney leads Linden over to Jelena. Past Wabberry, 4-3 Vancouver. Great passing play, and as you see the pass come across from Linden, Patrick gets across, but doesn't get enough of it with a stick, only directs it in the top corner. Great try, though. So, right now, Vancouver up 4-3 after two. Linden for Vancouver, one goal, one assist. McGilney for Vancouver, one goal, one assist. As we mentioned, first career playoff start in the net for Corey Hirsch. McLean awful in game one, so it's Hirsch getting the call here. A Patrick Ball win will place him fourth on the all-time playoff win list. Right now, though, he's down 4-3. We will keep you posted. Hi there, Bill Pito along with Barry Melrose. Great to have you with us on a wild night. It's the NHL tonight. We begin with the Blues. Wayne Gretzky missed the last two weeks of the season with a bad back. The time off allowed Gretzky to rest. And he was recharged in game one against Toronto, passing off for three assists. In goal, Grant Fuhrer says he has a lot of fun come playoff time. He made game one no fun for the Leafs, stopping 33 shots. More on Fuhrer in a, mo a moment, but first, Gretzky focused. Gilmore got into it with Gretzky in game one. Here, Gilmore gets into it with Brett Hull. Blues get a good chance. Gretzky skates in. Hits the brakes. Hull with a chance, but Potman makes a stop. Watch what happens next. Fuhr in the crease. Chris Pronger nails Kiprios into Fuhr. He's hurt on that play. Would stay in. Fuhr stays in the game, although he's hurt. Stops Matt Sundin. Shot from in close. On this play, Matthew Schneider goes down. Of an eye injury, he would come back. But Fuhr comes out. A torn ligament in the right knee. Terrible news for the Blues. So they go to John Casey. Of course, it was Fuhr who got just about all the playing time in the regular year. And here, Casey didn't look very good because Toronto with a chance, Warner shot, stopped by Casey. But Gartner there, bangs in the rebound, 1-0 Toronto. Toronto keeps coming, two on one now. Could Casey stop this? No. Wendell Clark with a goal, 2-0 Toronto. Blues though, back on the power play. Crab chucks blast, tipped in by Shane Corson. Blues are down by the score of 2-1. Leafs though respond. Gilmore's drive from the board, tipped in by Matt Sundin. 3-1 Leafs after one. Casey gave up three goals in that one period. Less than a period, actually. Second period, Pronger tripping up Gilmore. Gilmore and Domi get penalties for unsportsmanlike conduct. Both can't believe it. Fans litter the ice with debris in response to that call. So we got a situation. Now, after one goal, it's 3-2 Leafs. Huddy scored for the Blues. That's a situation. Murray Barron, shorthanded, beats Potvin. Ties the game at three after two. Third period, Schneider back from the hospital. Leafs power play. Schneider the blast, and Casey makes a save. Game still tied at three goals apiece. Late third, Kravchuk the blast. Potvin the save. But Hull puts in the rebound. St. Louis up 4-3. But just over five minutes to go in regulation. Kirk Muller for Toronto. And he ties the game up at four goals apiece. That's where we stand right now after regulation, tied at four. St. Louis has never lost a series when leading two games to none. Shane Corson for St. Louis, one goal, one assist. For Toronto, Doug Gilmore 
to assist. But the serious knee injury to Fuhr, who set NHL records this year for starts and appearances in one season by a goalie. The officials had warned both teams about being in the crease, and it's a guy in the crease who hurts Fuhr. Well, before the game, uh, John D'Amico, the supervisor of officials, came in to made a point to our coaching staff that uh, he felt that our team had maybe gone into the crease a little too much on Felix Potvin, and uh, and they were going to get ready to call that. And uh, I guess you all saw the play. Uh, Kiprios was uh, he was cross-checked by Pronger. He was in the crease and cross-checked by Pronger, and he made sure that he fell right on Grant Fuhrer. And uh, uh, it looks as though he's uh, torn his ACL, and it looks as though he's probably out for the series. So uh, not too many people are happy in the St. Louis dressing room right now. Sad irony here. Fewer at 33 holds up all year, just about starting every single game, and now he breaks down in the playoffs. Well, it, it, it's a huge pivotal time in this series because, number one, if Grand Fuhr gets hurt, St. Louis can come back and win this game uh, after being down 3-1. to one. The momentum certainly goes to St. Louis. They show they can win without Grand Fuhr. The good thing is, don't forget John Casey has NHL experience, uh, Stanley Cup experience with Minnesota a few years ago, so he's a proven goaltender and a guy who could revive his career if he has a very good playoff, so that's a very positive thing. But if the Blues can come back, when with all this adversity, they're certainly going to be a very uh, pepped up, popular, uh, excited club when they get back to St. Louis. And as far as what Roger's saying, every player in the league, when he gets that close and gets pushed from behind, he goes into the goaltender. It's not just what Kiprios did there. Everybody does it. They're told to do that. You go to the net now. It's just an unfortunate uh, accident at this time of the game. St. Louis and Toronto, 4-4 after 3. We'll keep you posted as they begin overtime. Much more to come on NHL tonight. When we come back, we will check out Montreal and the Rangers as the Rangers try to go T-bowling. So stay right where you are. We're back with more after this. In game one against Montreal, the Rangers' top line of Mark Messier, Adam Graves, and Pat Verbeek were all a minus three. So it didn't matter that New York outshot Montreal 45-32 and lurking just around the corner, the trip to Montreal, where the Rangers have just one win in their last 21 visits. We got Quintal being ridden into the boards by Verbeek. No penalty call. More hitting. David Wilkie gets a high stick up on Kovalev. So the Rangers with a power play. And on the power play, Dan Foos, who's been killing the Rangers. He did it in the regular year. He's doing it in the playoffs. Breaks in. Great move. Short-handed goal. 1-0 Montreal. Rangers pressure now. Sundstrom intercepts at center ice. Ahead to Curry in all alone. But Tebow makes a save. Camera from the goal thing here. You see Tebow get it with his glove, his locker. Just gets it as a goal over the line. Great hand-eye coordination by Tebow. Colin Campbell doesn't know what's going on. Another breakaway here by Shane Churla. T-bowling. Shane loves to go into the net. It's the goal camp here. Leach to the box. Habs two-man advantage. Danfu centers. It's not Ricky. It's not Ricci. It's Ricky with a goal. It's 2-0 in favor of Montreal. I don't care what you call him, Bill. Great player. Goes to the net. Shows a lot of guts. Pucks laying there. He knows he's going to get hit from behind. Stands in there and puts it in the net. Great goal. Nothing going right for the Rangers. Door stuck. They can't get off the ice. Heavy hitting now. The people the are booing. Yeah. They want off. We got Savage and Samuelson. Bang, bang. Watch it again. That's a bang, bang. Rangers now on the power play. Robitaille booed throughout the game by the home crowd. Gives it up to Koivu. Three on one, another shorthanded break. Koivu to Odeline. And another shorthanded goal. It's 3 0 Montreal. Messier says, What in the world is going on? You can see the Montreal Canadiens right here. Chris Great Murray. move there. Chris Murray beats Yari Curry, who's playing defense in the power play. Big save by Richter. Could have been a game turner. Gets it with his leg as he's dragging it there. Great save. Four minutes now left in the second. Mameso, he's got a goal. Rangers down 3 1. Messier's mood has changed. Rangers. Trying to climb back in. Two minutes left. Another Habs odd man rush. Two on one. Richter makes a save on Savage. Though it's 3-1. Montreal after two. Mario says, we like it. Third period. Tebow the save. Rebound, though. Samuelson to Mameso. Rangers down 3-2. Habs now with a chance. Two on one. Beret to Damfus. Richter the save. Beret with a chance, but hits the outside of the net. I thought New York was going to win this game when these two didn't go in. Giss gets it with the edge of the stick and miss on the side. Another open net on the other side. Under eight minutes to go. Samuelson, one time at a bank, seventh career playoff goal in his 99th playoff game. We're tied at three. But just over three minutes left, it's Vinny again. Donald checking it out. Vinny Damfus, second goal of the game, fourth goal of the series. He beats Richter, 4-3 Montreal. Bureau adds an empty netter. Oh, boy. Montreal up now two games to none. They win game two, 5-3. Sudan Foos, two goals, two assists in the two games. 
has eight goals and five assists in six games against the Rangers this year. Rangers have never, ever won a series when trailing two games to none in the loss. Lomeso, two goals. And now they have to go Barry to Montreal. As we mentioned, they've won just one of their last 21 at Montreal. It was like reverse sweater night tonight. The, the, the New York Rangers were the team that was undisciplined. They looked like the inexperienced team. The Montreal Canadiens looked very poised, very disciplined. Totally reversed to what it should be with the experience of the New York Rangers. But th this is ridiculous. New York's a better club. They're bigger. They're older, more experienced. Goaltending's uh, experience. They should be winning this series. Uh, they're being outworked by Montreal, and they're being outtimed by Montreal. As Montreal scores key goals at the right times. Uh, they fight back and make a 3-3. That's when their experience should have taken over tonight. It didn't. Colin Campbell's got a lot of work to do getting his team to believe in themselves again because right now they don't very uh dis undisciplined show tonight by the new york rangers and frankly didn't play very well at all bill they didn't deserve to win this game okay much more to come on nhl tonight when we return we will take a look at the other series in the east tampa bay trying to upend philadelphia and eric lindros great game we'll have the highlights and post-game reaction when we continue after this Welcome back, everybody. From Philadelphia last year, most of the scoring was done by the Legion of Doom line. This year, it's a much different story. In game one against Tampa Bay, seven different Flyers scored goals, and ten different Flyers had at least a point. Rod Brindamore says it makes everybody feel good that not just one line or one guy is getting all the scoring. Game two, again, from Philadelphia. And let's take a look at the activity. Loose puck. Dale Howard Chuck again for the Flyers. one nothing. Just over 130 into it. Terry Crisp doing what he always does. And what is that? Well... Writing. Yeah, taking notes. Eight minutes later, Flyers with a two-on-one. Leclerc, the first to speed up the middle. Going to find Lindros, but Poopa Scoopa, not good in game one. Great in this one, makes a save. Now Leclerc bursting up the middle, and it's Poopa again with the Scoopa. Late first period. Lindros upended by Ulanov. Flyers said it was a bruised left kneecap. Lindros came out, was upset. Early second period, Hextall. In the net here, will make the save on Selivanov. And introducing, returning from the locker room, number 88, 88, Eric, Eric, Lindros, standing ovation as Lindros, not seriously injured. Physical now, Leclerc jumps on top of Hammerlick. Look at that, no call. Now, late second period, Flyers on the break in. Leclerc runs into Poopa. And watch on the replay, Leclerc, his left ankle will get pinned here under Poopa, and Leclerc leaves the game in obvious pain, a sprained left ankle for John Leclerc, the 50-goal scorer, 51 actually in the regular season, a lot of pain right there. Early third period, Selivanov gets the rebound, and he's going to risk one past Hextall. We're tied at one, and we go into overtime. In overtime, the most experienced Tampa Bay player when it comes to playoff experience, Brian Bellows. He beats Hextall. In OT, Lightning with a dramatic victory on the road. Terry Crisp can put away the notepad. He's got a happy ending as Tampa Bay wins it 2-1. First ever win at the Spectrum in 10 games. Poopa Scoopa, 26 saves, including seven in the OT. Flyers power play just one for eight. Flyers lose a game. Listen to the injuries. Joel Otto, sprained left knee. John Drews, sprained left knee. John LeClaire, we showed you the sprained left ankle. So the series now tied at one game apiece. More now on the, guy, on the game from the guys who called it, Tom Mees and Darren Payne. Bill, here's the spectrum. The Tampa Bay Lightning tied up the series with Philadelphia 1-1. Only three goals in the game, but the big win in OT from a guy who's done, it, uh, done this before. In this Unbelievable. Situation. The experience. He won a Stanley Cup in 1993 with Montreal. Congratulations, Brian Bellows. A huge goal, obviously. Thank you very much. I tell you, it felt really good. And, uh, you know, I had about four or five shots this game. And each time I just kept trying to keep her low, put it in his legs or put it between him. And uh, it's good to see one finally go through. On the play, a little turnover in the neutral zone, but the puck was bouncing. Put us through this. Groton gave me a good chip pass on his backhand, and I right there I was going to shoot, but I had to wait, and finally the puck laid down enough where I could uh, get my stick on it flat and keep it low. And uh, that was a big thing. I had to wait for the puck to go flat before I could, uh, you know, really do anything. But you see here, you're a good heads-up play by Chris Grattan. Backhand, saucer pass, and, you know, the ice is bad, and the time I got it. Right there I wanted it, but I had to wait, and got it right when the puck was flat, and next thing you know, it's in the net. So we're going back to Tampa Bay. Going back tied at one, and I think kudos for your goaltender, Darren Pupa, Brian. He really rebounded after a tough night in game one. That kick save he made in in, uh, in overtime on the power play with, when they had the power play, and then Lindros shot off his head. Uh, you know, it's faced both those two saves. Uh, I don't have a chance to uh, score a goal. 
Brian, in this game, obviously Eric Lindros was a target, but Igor Yulanov and Shaw did a marvelous job on big number 88. I think they did. I think, uh, you know, Yulanov really got the ball rolling. Petit played really, really strong, and Shazi always has been. And uh, what the key was, I think we went after him, and, uh, you know, we we're going to hit him. We we're going to match him hit for hit, and then we turned the tables on him a little bit. I think they weren't as quite as prepared for us. They don't think they, I don't really think they thought they were going to come back and uh, battle quite as hard. But, you know, this team, like I said before, has had a lot of character and a lot of heart, and, uh, we felt a little embarrassed after that first game. Ryan, congratulations. You go 905 of OT, wins it, ties up the series. Game three Sunday in Tampa Bay. That's it here from the Spectrum in South Philadelphia. Now back to Bill Pito. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Flyers lose a game, a lot of injuries. Tampa Bay so awful in game one. How do you explain the turnaround? The reason they came out so good is they're embarrassed in game one. It's better to get beat like that 7-1, 7-0. If you lose 1-0, play great. In the dressing room after the game, you say, we can't play any better and we lose 1-0. You get killed like that, Terry Chris can come and say, guys, we're awful. Let's forget about it. We can play much better. The Philadelphia Flyers, they beat, win 7-0. They take the team lightly, just like Brian Bello said. So you got a team taking a team lightly. you got a team that's embarrassed, ready to play harder. And that's why it's better to get killed like that. You can come back the next day and build on that, just like the Tampa Bay did. A real gutsy effort. And they're really physical tonight. And they got to continue to do that. Now we look ahead in the East. It's Game 2 Friday between Washington and Pittsburgh. Of course, the Penguins blow that 4-1 lead. Carey didn't have it for the Caps, but they were able to come back from that 4-1 deficit because Pittsburgh's defense just didn't show up. Deja vu all over again, just like last year. Carey wasn't good. He wasn't sharp. Uh, right from the opening whistle, he was throwing the puck away. Uh, and uh, they get the 4-1 lead. And uh, right here, right at the start of the game, he was throwing the puck. He wasn't sharp with it. He's usually better with the puck. Sanford comes in there. Uh, and you see the whole thing wasn't right. Carey gets pulled, and all of a sudden, things start changing. It's 4-1, but then you're starting to see the Pittsburgh problem. Down low, no one takes any man. They all play the puck. They've got to change that if they're going to win this. Everyone stick checking. Nobody taking a man. Eliminate the man you go to. Don't let him get the return pass. Pittsburgh, terrible down low, and if they want to win this series, they're going to score a lot of goals, Bill, but they got to come back and play better in their own end. Start winning those individual battles. When a guy passes it, you don't let him jump back and get the return pass, and no stick checking. Finish the guy, knock him on his butt, don't let him get the return pass, and that's what Pittsburgh's got to get better at. Fundamentals. 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 David. Focus. Woody Hayes. Yeah, we got a developing situation here. Vancouver, Colorado, Atlanta, of course, won game one. Pick it up here. 4 3, third period. Gino. Ogic, I love him. Yeah, his second goal of the game. Oh, Gino. Look at the he's dance. Got, Look he's at the got dance. The dance going, too. He's got no teethers. He's got a dance. He's got two goals. Vancouver up 5 3. Trying to tie the series at one game apiece. When we come back on NHL tonight, we look ahead in the West. A great takeoff, but then a crash landing for the Jets in game one against Detroit. Barry's analysis is coming up. But first, we've got to tell you about tonight's question. Montreal had two shorthanded goals against the Rangers. So what is the playoff record for most shorthanded goals in a game? We'll have the answer for you when we come back after this. Goals in a game, they end two, three, set by Toronto in 1994, the Islanders in 1983, and the Bruins in 1981. Now we take a look ahead in the West, Detroit and Winnipeg. Winnipeg bowling a 1-0 lead after two. They go down 4-1, but Habe Habe, Nikolai Habe Bullen, first ever playoff appearance, made 30 saves. And the story for Detroit, as always, everybody chipping in. Bill, Winnipeg had a great first period. Everything they should have done, they did in the first period. They had a 1-0 lead, uh, no outnumbered chance against, no two-on-ones, no three-on-twos. Habe Bullen gave these guys a chance to win. The first period, he was sharp. You see right here, it's challenging, standing up, uh, no easy, uh, poor angles. Always out square, uh, very acrobatic, and that means he's aggressive. When he's out high like that and poke checking, that means he's a very aggressive, confident goalie. First period is excellent, just like they want to do. In the second and third period, they tried to win one nothing. They quit attacking. As you see here, nobody's attacking. They're all backing in. You see Fedosov, wide open slot. You can't do that against Detroit. You've got to pick your men up just like you did in the first period. And they never did that. In the second, third period, they thought, we'll win one nothing. Happy Boone will be great. And you can't do that. You've got to keep attacking. And that's what Winnipeg can do. They can score in their chances. They don't need a lot of chances to score, as we saw early in the first period. But you can't sit back and just let Detroit come wave after wave after wave, which they did in the second and third period. But a lot of positive things for Winnipeg if they can build on them. Also, we have Calgary and Chicago. The Blackhawks winning game 1-4-1. Kid will not start for the Flames. Tabarachi will get the call in the net for Calgary. And also the return of Jeremy Roenick. Just one assist for Chicago, but when he plays, it seems everybody plays better.
better. Only one assist, but this guy hasn't played in a month, and he looked extremely sharp. He looked quick, he looked aggressive, he had good timing, he made a play on the goal, and if he can come back to what, a semblance of what he was early in the year, you see the pass to Daze there, great pass, he's going to add uh, aggressiveness, he's going to add uh, emotion to this team, you see he's always in somebody's face, and that's what he adds to this team, different team. Joe Murphy, another guy who had a great game, Joe's got to be a very important that this team's going anywhere. Uh, Nichols had a great playoffs, and he's going to be very important for this team. But those are the guys that are going to have to do it for Chicago. Calgary, on the other hand, this team, without Roberts, with the back injury, uh, Sheldon Kennedy scores their goals. If Sheldon Kennedy, who I love and played for me, if he's going to be their main player and score their goals, Calgary's in a lot of problems. They're already changing goaltenders, dueling goaltenders. It doesn't matter. Chicago's a better team. Calgary's got to play hard, run into people, just like Tampa Bay, show some character. But the bottom line is Chicago should win this series. All right, it's over between Toronto and St. Louis. We're in overtime, and here we go. The Maple Leafs. On the power play, Matt Sundin, he's got a goal! His second of the game, and Toronto, a huge win, tying the series at one game apiece. The finals 5-4. Grant Fuhr, if you missed it, hurt a knee in the first period. The initial diagnosis, a torn right anterior cruciate ligament. He's done for the series, so bad news all around for St. Louis. This reminder, the Jets against the, wing, the Wings. Game two right here on ESPN2. Friday night all begins at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And also, Washington and Pittsburgh. Music change, it's a network change. Game two, ESPN the original. Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Three stars on night, third star, Montreal goalie Jocelyn Tebow. 35 saves in game two. He had 43 saves in game one. He's been playing great. Number two star, Montreal's Vincent Damfus. Two goals to assist. Montreal beats the Rangers 5-3. Number one star, Tampa Bay's Brian Bellows. Overtime beats the Flyers. Tampa Bay evens the series at one game apiece. They win it 2-1. Vancouver and Colorado. It was 5-3 in the third. Gino Ajik, two goals for the Canucks. Linden, one goal, one assist. Mark Penn, Jelen, a one goal, one assist. Canucks trying to tie it up at one game apiece. This reminder, we're back with NHL tonight, Friday night, after the Jets against the Wings, sometime after 10 p.m. Eastern time. Toronto, St. Louis, the Blues lose Grant Fuhr, and they also lose the game in overtime on the goal by Matt Sundin. Killer goal because it looked like a soft goal. Looks like one Casey should head. So now Mike Keenan's got to get these guys who believe so much in Grant Fuhr to believe in John Casey if St. Louis has any chance of winning this series. All the momentum now is with Toronto with the Fuhr injury. And the Rangers down 2-zip going to Montreal, a place they haven't hardly won at all. It's crazy. Uh, they shouldn't be down 2 nothing, but they are. Uh, Colin Campbell's got a big job getting these guys to believe in themselves. They don't believe they're a good team anymore. He's got to get them to believe that they're great again. All right, that'll do it. For Barry Melrose, I'm Bill Pito. It was great to have you with us. We'll see you back here on Friday night. See you, everybody.